nearly there, Robert. I beg your pardon? I'm nearly there. It's very slow. This that's device. all right. That's all right. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm sorting okay. out my computer at this end, so that's fine. It's been an experience going through all these things. Here we go. Section 2. Oh, okay. So I'm on it now, uh, Robert. Okay. Um, would you like to read section two? That's the one that puzzled me, if that's possible, Carl. Okay. How does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? Yeah. False religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religions, sins, have massed together, clear up to heaven. Revelation 18.5 For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religion leaders, religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove that they do not even know God, let alone have the right to represent him. Let's just read 1, 1 John 4, 8. God is love. Thank you. Um, one thing that shocked me was I did a, a search on JW.org and I found an awake for the 22nd of April, 1993, page wow, six well which calls the churches pawns of satan i'll just read it to you rather than encourage love for one's brother the churches have supported and even promoted the killing of one's brother in war thus they have become pawns of satan the devil just as surely as were the religions of the ancient egyptians assyrians babylonians and romans and so on so it calls the churches pawns of satan because of their involvement in warfare? So, so it's implying that Satan is using those religions. Would you believe that every religion that's involved in politics or warfare is a pawn of Satan or is being used by Satan in some way? If it puts, if it puts politi political uh, affairs before uh, Jehovah God, the God of the Bible, then Yes, I would say that it, that is true. Yes, because like such as wars, uh, religions did support the wars, and they, they told the people, the followers, to to go and fight in the wars. And that was quite common. They put the flags up in the churches, and so forth. I see you've got flags behind you, on the wall. Yeah, I do. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I know. So I can find out where I am in the world. Oh, I see. Know? Okay. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so would yeah. you say that religions that are involved in warfare are true religion or false religion? The, 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 we would say they were false religion. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, what about the fact that in the First World War, in the Watchtower magazine of the 15th of May 1918, the Watchtower magazine supported the American military in the First World War through the purchase of the Liberty Bond, also known as the Liberty Loan. Well, I would have to look at that, but that, they would have—they would not do that now. If they did it then, they would not do that now, uh, because knowledge is advancing as we go along. Understanding the Bible is advancing as we go along, uh, so. I don't know the history of that. Are, are, are you aware of what the Liberty Loan was, the Liberty Bond? Not really, no, I'm no. not, brother, no. It, it, was, it was money, it was a lump sum of money that you could loan the American government at no interest to support the war effort in the First World War. And it was known as the Liberty Bond or the Liberty Loan. And many Bible students at the time left, they became known as the Standfast Movement. I believe the Dawn Bible Students was one of these. Um, Rutherford promoted in the Watchtower the purchase of the Liberty Bond, 15th of May 1918, Watchtower, page 6257 of the reprints. Um, Rutherford did this because he knew he was going to be arrested and go on trial 
So he wanted something to say in court, to say, look, Your Honour, I'm supporting the American military in the First World War. So you shouldn't send me to prison for sedition because I'm supporting the American war effort. And yeah. um, there are a few Watchtower articles, but that's that's one that I, I, I have that I find a little shocking that the Watchtower is promoting the purchase of the Liberty Bond in the pages of the Watchtower itself. Yeah, it is really because we, we pay our taxes now, don't we? You you pay your taxes and I pay my taxes, and some of that tax money does actually go to supporting wars. Uh, so on a legal basis, whether they decided that that was the case on that legal uh, basis back then, um, nobody had to support uh, the Liberty Bond. No one, no one had to buy. Sorry, we're, no, we're no, breaking they, up a bit. They wouldn't do that today. I'm sure they wouldn't do that today, but uh, like I say, I didn't know about that. It doesn't get brought up so much, that. I, yes, but, I can uh, understand. Like I said, we, 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 we used to celebrate Christmas. You know, there was times when we celebrated Christmas, and but they've changed because knowledge has become available to us that proves that, that Christmas is completely wrong. Uh, I'm not interested in Christmas. Um, I'm only focusing on chapter chapter thirteen. Um, in in the Second World War, there's another watchtower that talks about the Jehovah's Witnesses supporting not this time the American government in the war effort, but um, the watchtower of the first of June, nineteen forty seven, page one hundred and seventy three, first of June, nineteen forty seven, page one hundred and seventy three. It talks about the situation in Australia and it discusses how during the Second World War, which finished two years prior to this watchtower, um, young people who went for Bethel service to, you know, to volunteer their time to work for the organisation, some were sent on military bases to work in canteens and others were, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. Now, it doesn't name the company, but I found that that's the Taylor Craft Aircraft Corporation, owned by Mr. Taylor, who was a very wealthy Jehovah's Witness. And uh, during the Second World War, Taylor Craft produced military aircraft for the Australian Royal Aircraft, for the Australian Royal Air Force. Mm. So there you have Jehovah's Witnesses, which the Watchtower admits in that 1947 Watchtower were supporting the Australian military in the Second World War. Jehovah's Witnesses started in the 1800s and they've learned and, and built on the knowledge uh, regarding what's right and what's wrong, regarding politics, regarding tax paying, regarding other supports, like you said, <clears throat> uh, and they have advanced by listening to the scriptures and trying to follow them exactly yes. as we can. Uh, so we're not, we're not, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that they haven't made any mistakes, any, any errors in the past. We don't say that we, because we are imperfect and we're being trained by looking at God's word regular. Yes. Um, yeah. I you, don't think there's any. I don't think there's any religion that hasn't been <clears throat> involved in uh, circumstances like that where they've not known what to do, maybe, and they've, they've made a wrong decision. Today, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, the New York Corporation, get share dividends from arms companies through the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. Henrietta M. Riley was a woman who died in 1945. She bequeathed that all her assets be turned into shares run by a bank in Detroit. I think it's called the Commercia Bank, but I could be wrong about that. Um, anyway, it's run by a Detroit bank for a fee, obviously. They don't do it for nothing. Um, because she's dead, she can't own it. The Watchtower doesn't own it. The bank doesn't own it. So it is an autonomous trust. It's basically shares administered by the bank. The sole beneficiary is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Um, the bank produces uh, accounts each year which are submitted to the IRS Tax D 
Department. IRS means Inland Revenue Service. So you can find out about it from the IRS tax records. And some of the share dividend is from arms companies such as Boeing, Northrop Grumman, which makes the B-2 bomber, and Honeywell. Um, they also have recently acquired shares in Pfizer, which is probably why the governing body is pushing the vaccine so strongly. And they don't have shares in Morris now, but about 10, 15 years ago, for a few years, they had shares in the tobacco company Morris. Now, if this is Jehovah's organization, why don't they turn this money down? It's about half a million to three quarters of a million dollars per year. Why is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York knowingly accepting money from arms companies through the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust? Well, it's a, bit, it's a, it's a good question, uh, Robert, and I'm not sure whether I'm up to answer it, but if I was in that situation, uh, I, get, I get a pension. I get a pension from who I used to work for, and they invest their money in various places. And I, I'm not in control of that investment, but I do benefit from them. Uh, and, I would not turn, and I would not turn it down. That's not, that's, that's not relevant. Firstly, you're not Jehovah's organization, right? And but secondly, the I... Watchtower has probably got assets of about 100 billion, okay? 100 billion. The Watchtower is about as rich as Bill, Bill Gates who I think is now the third richest person on earth. Yes, okay. that's good, and that's what we want, because there's a right. lot of uh, disasters happening all the, over the world that we support. The Watchtower could turn down a mere half a million to three quarters of a million dollars per year on principle, because they know that some of that money comes from arms companies. Why would they want to turn it down? Because they're Jehovah's organization. If Jehovah's organization has to be neutral in warfare because that's the will of Jehovah God, then they should turn down the offer of monies, which n they know come f partly from arms companies. It's called having principles. I can see, yeah, I can see <laughs> your point, yeah. yeah. But if that woman, if, that if I followed it right, if that lady in, in left that money with... The JW. No, she didn't. She didn't leave it with JWs. She set up an independent trust called the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. It's okay. autonomous. It's self-owning. So nobody owns it. But every year, the sole beneficiary of the share dividends is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Now, all they have to do is turn the money down because they could say, we are Jehovah's organization. We have principles. We have we have honor. We will not go against the will of Jehovah God and accept money from arms companies. But no, they're just like all the other religions. They're just like the Anglicans. They're just like the Catholics. They're just like a lot of these Pentecostal TV preachers. Well, I beg to differ. But uh, if, if, if I had invested money in a trust, and part of that was mine, uh, even though I died, and that I, I wouldn't be disappointed if that money was used you know, by JW. Because I, if I've invested money into a trust, I expect to get some... Yes, but the Watchtower, the Watchtower doesn't own the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. It's autonomous. It's independent. And all they have to do is say, we turn the money down because we have something called principles. We are Jehovah's organization. The eight men in Warwick, New York, represent Jehovah. And because those eight men represent Jehovah, they have principles, they have honor, they will turn the money down. And they don't. They accept the money each year, knowing full well some of that share dividend, not all of it, only some of it, comes from arms companies. And recently, they've acquired shares in Pfizer. And about 10, 15 years ago, they had shares in Morris, the tobacco company. And they always accepted that. They never, they never turned it down. They've been receiving money from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust for almost 80 years now. Well, I'm sure that's what the Henrietta would want. That would be what the woman wanted, that she invested her money into a trust and she would want someone that she loves to, to benefit the from The Watchtower that. Bible and Tract Society of New York, but why do they accept the money? That's what I'm saying. If they really are Jehovah's organization, if they really do represent God, surely they turn the money down because on principle, firstly, they don't need the money. They've got assets of 100 billion, roughly. 
So they don't need a mere half million to three quarters of a million a year, but they're greedy. I, I would, I would, uh, I would say they were greedy to do the right things, and I, and that's that's where I'm meaning. Because that woman, Henrietta, was her name? Henrietta M. Raleigh. That woman wanted the yes. organisation. Yes. Yes, that's wrong. that's right. Yes, yes. So would that not be too wrong to turn it down? But some of the shares are in arms companies. Well, we don't control the shares. But you can you've got the option of turning the money down on principle. Well, and refusing money from Henrietta. Yes. That, would that not would that not be wrong? It's 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 a it's a matter of conscience. I guess if you got no conscience, then you you wouldn't see it as a wrong thing to do to accept the money. Well, I, I would view it as a right use of conscience myself right right uh, and i know i know you've got money invested well i'm assuming but i have and it's been misused which i don't like i don't like them using it to make weapons yes. for what what yes. they do um the watchtower has accepted the gift from james mccann of over five million shares in the rancam engine corporation this is a a company that an American corporation that, that makes small engines for drones and part of the engine parts are made out of ceramics um, because engines get very hot and if they're made out of ceramics unlike steel they can't uh, get so hot that they soften and warp so they make engines for drones including military drones and just over five million shares of the Rancam engine corporation which makes drone engines, military yeah. drones, was given to the yeah, watchtower. Yeah. Was given to yeah. the watchtower. They accepted that. Why? Why did they accept that? Why didn't they turn that down, knowing that these drones um, drop bombs on people and kill people? Yeah, but that's not our control, is it? That's it's what not our control. It's not. It's not. It's not JW's control on how that one is used. No, they could turn the shares down. They could say, Mr. James McCann, we don't want your... F it was just over 5 million shares in Rancam Engine Corporation. We don't want these shares because we're Jehovah's organisation. We have principle. We have honour. We serve Jehovah God. And we don't yeah, want we do, to support yeah. the military. We don't want anything to do with the military because we're pure. We can't help having anything to do with the world and what happens in the world. We right. cannot... Uh, we cannot delete that. And if money's been invested to us and given to us from uh, how the world uses its money to invest things, well, that's the capitalist system, is it not that? And we, can't, we cannot change that. We wouldn't attempt to change You have that. Uh, the option to, to reject the offer of 5 million shares in a company that makes um, engines for drones, drones that contain bombs that are dropped in the Middle East and kill people. But no, you, you choose to accept it. Can I ask, what's the difference between the Catholics, Anglicans and Jehovah's Witnesses? Aren't they all exactly the same? Just religious um, companies that are set up to make money. Isn't that really the aim of all these religions? Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, the Pentecostals, the Catholics, the Anglicans, the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's all the same. It's just about making money. No. I what's the difference? I would dis well, the difference is... The Jehovah's Witnesses uh, make all the decisions based on the scriptures. Now we know, like Catholics, uh, they they at one time went through a period of not encouraging people to read the Bible, and other religions as well. Which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get at, but yeah. that's that's why I have chose Jehovah's Witnesses because they uh, they look they very. Uh, enthusiastically try and make the decisions based on the Bible. But you're saying those decisions that don't get involved in war or politics? Those those decisions about investments, I know, I know. My my pension's invested in the White House. Now, now what, I'm not going to try and change the White House. I'm not going to try and change the bank's decisions of who to invest the money in. Because, because when I worked in the coal mines, my, my money, the was in my pension was invested in the White House. So where do I go with that, Robert? I'm not asking about your situation. I'm asking about the Watchtower. Well, I, I do, I do. But what is the difference between the Watchtower and the Catholics and the Protestants, 
the Anglicans yeah. and the Pentecostals and the Mormons. Surely they're all exactly the same. They're all after just getting money any way they can. Well, in the Bible, uh, in Matthew 24, God said that, he, that a faithful and discreet slave would, would arise from this world. And that being faithful and discreet is, is being faithful in God's word but but, 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 but if they accept shares in arms companies such as shares in Rand Cam Engine Corporation, surely they're not being faithful to God's word. Well, if they supported the American military in the First World War, as the Watchtower of the 15th of May 1918 said, surely they're not faithful. Well, they looked at the scriptures and made the decision then. And that investment from that woman, they... they she's getting what she wanted mm. because we all invest money in it is a trust or whatever we invest the money and we don't choose how it's used but we are allowed to we are allowed to invest our money have we're you, allowed to use banks have you noticed how on jw broadcasting they don't wear them now but at the start of jw broadcasting some of the governing body members were wearing solid gold rolex watches mr hurd was wearing a solid gold Rolex Submariner watch, which w retails at just over twenty thousand dollars, and Mr. No, Lett really was know. wearing a slightly cheaper Rolex at about eight thousand dollars. Mr. Mr. Lett also wore a pinky ring with a Freemason square and compass on it. Well, that that's their choice, uh, but they've got responsibility. Uh, Brother Earth. If, if someone bought you a gold watch, what would you do? Would you throw it away? Would you keep it? Would you use it out of appreciation? I know what I'd do. Well, on on the um, Caleb and Sophia videos, the videos made for children, they tell children not to buy ice cream, but to put the ice cream money in the contribution box at the back of the Kingdom Hall. <laughs> why doesn't Mr. Lett and Mr. Hurd, why don't they sell their Rolex watches and do just what they're telling Caleb and Sophia on JW Broadcasting to do and put all the money into the collection box at the back of the hall? Well, why, is why is Mr. Lett saying there is more money going out than, than there is coming in? And Mr. Lett <laughs> is begging every episode of JW Broadcasting. They're begging more and more for money, money, money. No, JW no, Broadcasting no, no. is just like the Pentecostals, <clears throat> just like the Catholics, just like all the other religions on TV. They're, they're TV ministries that just beg repeatedly for money. And yet, yeah, I bet, I and yet they wear brutal. Rolex watches whilst they beg for money. There was even a, a Watchtower article or an Awake article from the 1990s which condemned TV preachers for begging for money whilst they wore Rolex watches. And yet Jehovah's Witnesses, <coughs> the governing bodies ended up doing the same thing, wearing Rolex watches whilst at the same time they beg for money. Jehovah's people have never begged for money. Never. So on JW Broadcasting, you're telling me they never ask for money? They never beg for money. They ask for money. They sure were the, the, you're playing with words. It's, you're playing with words. They ask for money repeatedly <coughs> on JW Broadcasting. No, they don't. No, they don't. I'm, I'm, I think you're wrong, there, Robert, because they make a point of not doing that. When we when we when we approach a congregation, mm -hmm. we never ask for money from them. We we know that that's their choice. That's their choice. What we do, we may show how money's being used, so we'll show like disaster relief uh, helps, aids, uh, refugee helps, where we're, we're aiding that, and all that in the building all goes and it's shown to the, uh, the brothers and sisters, and then the brothers and sisters say to themselves, yeah, I'm going to support that. We never, never, never beg for money. Never. But you ask for money on JW they, Broadcasting. They never, they don't ask. No, they don't ask for money. But didn't Mr. Let say there's more money going out than there is coming in and then suggest that people increase their contributions? I heard him say that on JW Broadcasting. There's more money going out than there is coming in. <laughs> well, he prob he's probably stating a fact, so he's letting me know the situation. 
so you can give so you can give more money no he doesn't beg for money so he you can give more money but he doesn't sell his rolex watch heard and let don't sell the rolex watches and why is mr let wearing a freemason pinky ring with a square and compass on i don't know that's it that's his decision whatever he wears which whether it's a personal thing but he's certainly not breaking jehovah's laws what being a freemason well it's I'm not saying he is a Freemason. And Brother Letts and Brother Urge certainly not saying the Freemasons. Because lots of people at the top of lots of denominations are Freemasons. Yeah. Free, so, free, 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 Freemasonry has infiltrated not just the Catholic Church but almost every Protestant denomination to quite a significant degree. Well, you know something, Robert, regarding that, where they, where they live and and now they put up. Uh, you, you're allowed to go and visit that and go and see the situations where they are, unless they're being looked after because of sickness. I know Brother Herd hasn't been well. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. So I know he, I know he hasn't been well. I know he's but quite he, aged, isn't he, Miss Mister Herd? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He, yes. I, like, I like Brother Herd. He's, he's, he's a likable person. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the way I view it, you know. Like I've said, it, it, if the world invests its money in, in things, if it's our investment, if I'm in that trust, I'm in a trust myself. Mm. And, and if they invest their money or my money that I've lent, you know, given them to use, I can't do anything about that. But I, I cannot, I cannot just not. I cannot just put my money under the bed, can I? Um, what about the fact that your book says for centuries religions have meddled in politics, supported wars and caused to approve the deaths of countless numbers of people um, and it's clearly condemning involvement meddling in politics yes? yeah but the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York joined the United Nations in 1992 this was exposed by the Guardian newspaper on the 8th of October 2001 they produced the first of a series of three articles accusing the Watchtower of hypocrisy and the Watchtower's never taken them to court. Why did um, Mr Lloyd Barry, one of your then governing body members, sign you, sign the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York into UN membership in 1992? And then to comply with that UN membership you had to promote the aims of the UN and the Charter of the UN, which you did usually through the Awake, usually through Awake articles every year. Well, I have to, uh, I have to look that up. I couldn't give you a definite answer on that. Uh, <coughs> but the United Nations is something that the Bible really is identified as uh, as against Jehovah's people. I understand that. You believe that the UN is one of the wild beasts of the Book of Revelation. You believe it's satanic. Yes? Yeah. You're, you're, you're well informed, Robert, aren't you? You really are well informed. And that's commendable. Well, I'm better informed than you are. <laughs> and I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. Um, yeah. um, but that, that asks me wonder why. Why are you so interested in... So I critical? study a lot of different religions. I speak to Mormons. I speak to Christadelphians. I speak to... Seventh-day Adventists. I used to be a Pentecostal. Um, that's the group I like to speak to the most. I used to be a oneness Pentecostal, which is a very extreme form of anti-Trinitarian Pentecostalism. Uh, I have spoken to those people, but it's difficult to get to speak to oneness pastors because they threaten me with the police uh, repeatedly if I um, try to speak to them. Um, yeah. But all these well, religions are all exactly yeah. the same. They don't really know the first thing at all about what they're talking about. It's just a case of just scamming people for money. Um, well, I disagree, though. I disagree entirely, though, because... Uh, I'm not saying there are well, individuals who are genuine Christians in all of these groups, because I believe that is the case. But I think that the, the denominational system, the church hierarchy, the pyramid with one guy or, or eight guys at the top, unfortunately... Um, over time it becomes corrupt in that the main aim of the denomination is to perpetuate itself and and money for the leaders um, and money is involved in a, in a capitalist system 
money has yeah. got to be involved. Um, but um, regarding the Watchtowers United Nations membership, um, thousands of people wrote to the UN about this after the Guardian article, which was the 8th of October 2001. And, a, and the head of the NGO section, NGO means non-governmental organization, that's the type of association that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York had with the United Nations. Um, Paul Hoffiel then wrote a letter on the eight, on the 11th of October 2001, to whom it may concern. I'll just read it to you briefly. To whom it may concern. Recently, the NGO section has been receiving numerous inquiries regarding the association of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York with the Department of Public Information, DPI. This organization applied for association with DPI in 1991 and was granted association in 1992. By accepting association with DPI, the organization agreed to meet the criteria for association, including support and respect of the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and commitment and means to conduct effective information programs with its constituents to a broader, broader audience about UN activities. Well, it, I'm just commenting now, it did that through publication of Awake articles which followed the yearly theme of the United Nations. Well, we were, Mr. Hoffield's, can I just finish Mr. Hoffield's letter? It's nearly finished. Yeah, go on, yeah. Um, it, Mr. Hoffield then goes on, in October 2001, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York requested termination of its association with DPI. Following this request, the DPI has made a decision to disassociate the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York as of the 9th of October 2001. We appreciate your interest in the work of the, of the United Nations. Signed, your sincerely, Paul Hoffiel, Chief NGO Section, Department of Public Information. Now that's on UN-headed paper. The Watchtower's never taken the Guardian to court when the Guardian called them hypocrites. The, the Watchtower's never taken the UN to court or Mr Hoffiel for, for libel or slander because it's all true. The well, well if, if a person starts taking things to court, if somebody makes an accusation against me, me personally, right? They, but they can't prove it. I know they can't prove it. It doesn't necessarily do me any good to take it to court and fight about it and blow it up and get it in the publicity. I may as well just let it go. Because I can't fight off every Tom, Dick and Harry. The, the saying things I'm not asking about you. I'm talking about a multi-billion-dollar corporation with assets <clears throat> probably around a hundred billion. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. They they take anything that moves to court. They are very litigious, mm -hmm. right? There was a guy who 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 has Lego. He's called. It's not his real name. He went by the name of Kevin McFree, and he has little Lego characters that he moves around. He uses stop motion photography. Have you seen Wallace and Gromit? Yes? Yeah. Well, Wallace yeah. and Gromit is stop motion photography. And Wallace and Gromit are made out of plasticine. Well, Kevin McFree uses Lego. He moves, moves little Lego characters around. And it's based in a town called Dubtown. And it's basically just mocking, mildly mocking Jehovah's Witnesses using Lego. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, probably spent hundreds of thousands taking him to court in America and he's just a, a British person Kevin McFree is not his real name I won't give his real name um, and it's recently been thrown out of the American courts and the watchdown might be in trouble because they're they're taking people to court simply to bully and to intimidate people I don't I don't agree with that at all and I, I think... Don't agree think with that, what? Uh, I think Jehovah's... Don't agree with what? Don't agree well, what with you, what? what? I don't agree with uh, things that are being said about Jehovah's organisation. What but things? I, think you're, I, I, would, I would say, Robert, you're being very critical. What things? I, I, would, I would ask you, have you ever been to a Jehovah's Witness meeting? Yes, yes, I went about 15 years ago to... Did you get baptised? 
No, no, I, I went to one opposite the eye hospital, which was packed. And then somebody gave me a lift in his van to Torpoint Kingdom Hall. That was about 15 years ago. I wasn't very impressed by what I saw. And then you went to the barn again, Christians? Um, well, at the time I was attending a evangelical church, yes. Okay. So is it okay if uh, I close this Zoom now? Because I don't think it, uh, we're benefiting. I don't think you're benefiting. I'm not benefiting. Well, you're certainly but not because you're not prepared to listen to anything that I say. I'm, you're not prepared I to engage heard. with me. You're not prepared to dialogue with me. You're, well, well you just want to... I, I disagree with that as well uh, because, we've, you know, we've tried. But uh, Jehovah's using... Jehovah is only using one organisation on earth. And what organisation is that? It's Jehovah's organisation. And what organisation is that? It's JW.org. But they receive shares from arms companies, military well, drones that drop bobs and kill people. The, I'm going to say right, it's more the Robert, engines are made by the Rancam I'm Engine Corporation, and 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 the JW.org accepted that. This I'm is total to hypocrisy. Robert, we're not, you're not benefiting, and I'm not benefiting. Well, you're certainly not, are you? Oh, he's he's hung up. That's it. He's hung up. That's the end of him. He's hung up on me.